y'all, Jim Panky here, and I want to talk to you today about harmonics. Earl Scruggs called them chimes sometimes. Uh, you'll hear songs like Foggy Mountain Chimes. Uh, Tony Trishka recorded the song called New York Chimes, and, and that's talking about harmonics, just like what you saw me demo. And we use them in a lot of different songs, so it's a real important technique and a skill to have but sometimes they can be a little bit mysterious and hopefully I can show you some things today that will help you with creating those chimes because they are everywhere. <laughs> you, you can find chimes all over. So I guess the main thing is, what are they? Where are they? How do we do them? So let's start with the where. Where can we find these things? And I'm going to give you three simple places to do chimes. I mean, you can create them in various spots on the fingerboard. And that's kind of up to your ability, technique, and imagination. And there's three really simple places that you can find chimes. You can find them at the 12th fret. You can find them at the 7th fret. And at the 5th. So, but they're all over the fingerboard. and they're, You can find them in different spots. But those are three easy places to find them. Now, how do we make this sound? This really important sound that we use in a lot of songs like Bugle Call Rag. And we even use it for the little TikTok in Grandfather's Clock. We use it in a lot of different places. So how do we do it? Well, first, go back to where we find them. 12, 7, 5, just to start. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to take your finger ever so slightly and we're just going to deal with the fourth string. So the fourth string sounds like if we don't do anything, just like that when we pick it. But if we just barely touch it right above the 12th fret, and when I say barely, I mean a feather's weight of pressure on that string. Don't push down on it. It'll sound dead. Don't, yeah, you know, don't fret it. We're not fretting it. We're just barely touching it. And you should hear that octave higher note. Here it is, low, and an octave higher. And that's just barely touching those strings at the 12th fret. And here, let, let me move the camera and I'll show you. So just... Just barely. Maybe that helped. <laughs> I, I hope. You can also do them at the 7th fret. Practice them there. Practice them at the 5th, too. And the 5th fret may be a little tricky for you to begin with, and that's okay. That, that's totally okay. You know, we're just learning, so it's okay not to be good at a thing. You know, you only get to be new at something once. So, so enjoy the process of learning how to make those harmonics. Now, what are they? Well, harmonics, and, and this is about as far as old Jim's going to get into music theory. But our first note, and we're just do with all, all on the fourth string. Here. That fourth string, that's a D, that's the fundamental tone of that note. If we create the harmonic at the 12th fret, that's the second harmonic. Why is it the second harmonic? Because there's two portions of the string vibrating. You know, you, you, if, if you've done my setup video, we talk about the 12th fret being halfway. So this part of the string and this part of the string is the same length. That's how we know how to, where to put our bridge. So we have two portions of string vibrating together 
but it's creating a harmonic. If we put it at the seventh fret, that's the third harmonic. We've got three even sections of string vibrating. So that's the third harmonic. And at the fifth fret, that's the fourth harmonic. So we have four even pieces of string vibrating. You know, I have a better way to show you this. I'm going to, I'm going to round up some friends and we're going to go outside and I've got a, I got an idea for a demo. Fingers crossed. I hope this works. And now we've created tempo, and that's that's three. <laughs> and I don't know if I can make it do four, but we'll try. Yep, yeah, almost four. There. Yeah, you're getting it there. That's four. For me, being able to see what was happening with a big piece of rope that we had helps me visualize what's going on on the string. So we've got pieces vibrating at different, you know, in different spots on the string. So at that, we've got a, a piece going around up here and a piece going around down here, and it creates that octave. But once you understand how you can divide the string and create the harmonic, it, for me, for me, it made it easier to do it. All right, folks, I hope this was really helpful for you. I hope seeing how it was done, hearing the different harmonics, seeing what was going on with the big piece of rope to help you understand what's happening with the string and having some places to try it. I hope that it sparks your imagination and you will start trying some some harmonics. I, I look forward to hearing from you. Where are you using them? That would, I'm, I'm genuinely curious. And if you like this sort of thing, be sure to hit the like button subscribe and ring the bell if you want to get notifications when I post new lessons. <laughs> Folks, I appreciate y'all. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.